One of the things that I love is that two films idea of your life. And there's like two stories you can tell. One that is safe and full of regret, and one that is risky and full of pride and joy. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, thank you very much. Um, there's quite a few of you out there, but I'm not going to look at too many of you. I'm going to look just above your heads, OK? Um, but it doesn't mean what I'm saying isn't meant for you all. Um, my name is Ian James. This is my partner, Nick Selby. Uh, we started a food business um, 12 years ago now in London. Um, and actually, a lot of what Kamal said and a lot of what Simon said today, um, it, it, it goes for us too. Um, a lot of our early work was, or our inspiration was around farm, far, farmers markets going back you know, to the early 90s. And um, I suppose one of the things that we tried to do was take some of what those markets do um, with, with the integrity that they have. And likewise with Simon, um, you know, to build a place where people come and experience something that is based around food, but it's not just about the food, it's about the actual act of sharing the food. And of course, along, along the way, you get caught up in business, but I'm going off script because, and I'll try and stick back. But anyway, it's not good morning now, it's probably good afternoon, so uh, apologies for that. But that's, that's, our, that's our company, Morrows and Morgan, and um, yeah, here we are. Hello, um, before I go into my intro, um, I just wanted to share with some of you um, about the lecture field, um, which is where we're staying. It's a divided camp at the moment between the, um, the, the to-doers and the dunners. <laughs> <laughs> the Dunners are sort of cruising around, looking quite confident, you know, <laughs> shirts off, Simon apart, you know, up at the bar having fun. Uh, the to doers, us, um, anxious, still intense, reading scripts, up at the chicken shed, type, type, type. I mean, um, so in about 19 minutes, I'll be a Dunner. And in the bar. <laughs> so, um, my name's Nick. Um, I want to give you a bit of a very brief history about why I got into food. Um, it was uh, my mother. Um, like many of us, she started, um, uh, you know, my interest in food um, based around the table, um, based around Sunday lunches, based around, you know, picking fruit in the back garden. My father kept bees. We sort of really had a wonderful upbringing. I didn't really appreciate it at the time. I don't think many of us do. But um, she baked. Um, she made these phenomenal Sunday lunches. Um, she started giving me uh, the real tools to understand what proper food could be. You know, we didn't buy biscuits. Um, there was a chap that came around in a, a grocery van um, and we bought from the back of the van. We lived in sort of rural Dorset um, and we, we picked and choose from there. It was um, really special times and until we sort of opened our, our shop, I, I sort of disregarded that in some ways. Um, anyway, so what mother did was, you know, teach me how to cook. Um, I was roasting uh, those Sunday roasts by the age of 11. Um, she was inviting family and friends in, and um, I was plowing food onto the table. Um, I was, you know, really sort of getting a, a really useful skill set, which I was later to use um, when I moved to London. Um, London brought all sorts of things to me. It's a huge kaleidoscope of information. Um, I started work as a photographic assistant. Um, I was able, with that toolkit, to go into restaurants, do little um, watching up jobs, prep jobs, um, and, um, yeah... A, a, a really useful time. Um, but it is my curiosity and my greediness, possibly, that um, really got me into food. When I um, took jobs in restaurants, I was maybe in the bar, but always down in the restaurant, um, in the kitchen, asking questions. Um, and this really sort of led me into um, where we are now. Over to you. Um, similarly, I, I was fortunate, and I grew up um, in a garden at a rhubarb patch. Um, and um, for, so, for some, it's, it's the devil's food, and for others, it's, um, it's heaven. Um, we had a garden. I had parents who cooked, or I had a mother who cooked. I had a father who gardened, and every meal was, was, meant something. And as Nick said, I probably didn't necessarily understand that at the time, but coming back to food many years later, it's what I've, what I've carried with me, perhaps quite deep-seated. Um, also, there's, there's a, there was a, 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 a Welsh link as well. My, um, my grandmother um, started a shop in um, Ebervale, which is a, 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 was once a thriving steel town in the South Wales Valleys. Um, her husband had died in, in his 40s. 
um, and she needed to fend for herself. Um, and she acquired a shop, a grocery shop, and I spent many years um, on my in school holidays um, standing by her side or on a stool serving customers over the, uh, over the counter. And perhaps it was there where some seeds were sown for me, unbeknownst at the time. Um, cut to my 30s. Um, I was living in London, I was working in the subsidised art sector, um, and I was renovating um, a building which needed an income stream. And we'd been turned down by lots of funders, and we had the space. And we thought, OK, everyone's doing it, let's open a restaurant. And uh, we did. It was an 80-cover restaurant, and through, sh through some sheer fluke, um, it became very successful. We employed a great chef, probably a lot to do with him, um, and um, it was a great environment, to the point where actually people were coming as much to see the, the, the food as they were coming to, as much for the food as they were coming to see the art. Um, I then assumed the role of restaurant manager and started working closely with the chef and started understanding about provenance, about seasonality, all of those things which I'd probably been told by my parents many years before, but suddenly were all coming to life again. Nick. So um, that was around 1999. Um, Ian and I met each other, um, and uh, we started to um, go out, explore the food scene. Borough Market was really getting some groundswell then. Um, uh, we were appreciating not only good restaurants, I had a great business, um, nice income. Um, we were really appreciating the simple things, like an apple or a beautiful piece of cheese or, you know, and we really started to educate ourselves then about what's really in season, what's really out of season, and how we can sort of like, you know, enjoy those, those different foods. Um, sadly, later that year, 1999, my mother passed away, and that sort of hatched this little plan in my head. Um, I thought, what can I preserve from her teaching that can take me into my next career? I was a photographer's agent. I was... Um, slaving over contracts, um, working all these hours, working on my own, huge amounts of pressure, I realised something had to change. Um, hit my 40s, um, you know, embraced the uh, um, uh, sort of breakdown of, um, I guess, midlife crisis, if you like, um, sold my business to my staff um, and thought, well, let's start really shifting this. Um, the day that I sold my, um, sold my business, we were in a pub in Primrose Hill, um, we were um, having lunch, um, we walked out into the street and there was a to let sign um, outside what is now our um, flagship store. Literally, and we've heard it a little bit this weekend, one door had closed in my life and another one had opened. You know, it's about taking, it's about taking a gamble, it's about pushing yourself, it's about letting go of something that's not working for you and opening something else. It literally, within two weeks, my life had changed. I closed one door um, and opened up another. Um, but we had to get a plan together. We had this amazing site. We, were, we realised that Melrose was going to be a part of it. Ian came up with a brain um, storm of putting his mother's maiden name on the other end of it. Melrose and Morgan was born. We then had to get a, a, a food idea together. Um, I ran off. We booked some chefs. We started devising menus. And like Simon was saying, it really is about the food. So we had to get this menu down and we had to get it really organised. And, um, but we hatched the plan, and on we went. So we opened the doors to Marrows and Morgan in 2004, and... Oh, there it is. Um, that was, that's our little shop. It is fairly little. Um, and it's in a neighbourhood. It's not on a high street. Um, and it was, in pretty, it was in a fairly sort of um, run-down area of Primrose Hill, if there was such a thing at the time. Um, and, um, but it, you know, it wasn't up there in the high street. So we had to make to work people um, to come and visit us. Um, one of the things that was sort of going around at that time, you know, the supermarkets were big back then. You know, we would, that's where we did, apart from the times when we'd go down to Borough Market on a, on a Saturday, we'd end up naturally in Tesco's or Sainsbury's or Asda on, on a Wednesday because there was very few places in London at that point to go and buy the sort of quality ingredients we'd become used to um, buying at the market. So our, basic, our race, raison d'etre was to try to bring all of these types of artisan suppliers, put them all under one roof, uh, under one roof and be there seven days a week. Um, and that, that was the basic premise of, of, of the shop. 
We added to that by putting, complicating it, perhaps by putting a kitchen in there, um, two real chefs cooking every day, open. Everything was, we, weren't, we didn't want to hide anything about food. Um, the, we had a big cold room, the, it was a glass fronted. Customers could come in, ask questions. Um, and what we soon found is that we were creating a little community. People love to talk about food. Everyone eats food. Everyone's got an opinion about food. And they're very happy normally to share it. Share it. Um, Going back as well, the, the, we wanted to be the antithesis of those supermarkets. We wanted to go back to the, some of those old principles of shopkeeping. We wanted to be the face of, of the shop. We wanted people to feel comfortable in our shops. We wanted people to, to tell us if they didn't like something, as well as to tell us if they did like something. Um, and so we really put ourselves in the shop and, and um, opened ourselves to up, up, up to that. Um, Nick. OK, so I'm going to fast track here because otherwise it's going to get tedious. Um, we found London on photo shoots, trying to find, to find gojo berries for Lady Gaga. No one had a gojo berry in sight back then. Um, this is eight years ago. Um, we were putting a cookery school together in our shop every night. Um, you know, we were just loading the business. Anything we could do with food, you know, we did it. Um, and one of the philosophies of Hyatt, I think, is you know, doing one thing, which is great, doing one thing and doing it well. We were doing many things and doing them okay. So, you know, I think it's very easy, especially in food, to kind of grow your, your, your business sort of out you know, laterally, if you like. But sort of scaling things going forward was, 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 tricky, was tricky. Um, and, you know, this started to um, cause issues. We realised it was causing issues. And this was um, highlighted um, in a, uh, a visit to our... Um, mortgage broker, um, we wanted to move to North London and join the fine people of Primrose Hill, like Penny. Um, thanks, Ben. Um, and we um, got a shock. Um, we sat at the desk and we had filled out a pile of papers. The lady that Ian knew ran off. Um, 10, 15 minutes passed. She came back into the room um, and gave us that kind of school mom look and said, um, you know, your application um, has failed. And we were like, well, what, you know, how come? She said, you know, in the industry, uh, we have a, um, uh, a name for you kind of people. You are busy fools. <laughs> so, shock horror. Um, what we'd done was created this business, turnover, lots of people employed, you know, celebrities. It was all going off, but we weren't making money. We kept our, we, we, we'd forgotten to look at the bottom line. Um, and, um, you know, we really had to sort of change that philosophy. And um, we were starting to retract and come up with a new strategy? The, the, the busy fools thing really stuck with us and it hung heavy over our heads. And um, so we started looking at things and we started to analyse the bottom line. Um, and that, means, that meant de-threading and uncomplicating the business. Um, it also meant that you know, there, was, there was a, um, like Conor was saying, there was a big black hole, but it was a, a big black hole of, of, of our causing, and, and we had to get, get ourselves out of it. The balance sheet was not pretty at all. Um, and it meant that there was no one going to lend us any money for the business, let alone for a, for a new home for us. And so um, there are times when you have to dig deep into your soul, into, um, into your pockets, and it resulted in Nick having to sell a property, in, in all, well, his property, in order to, for the business to survive. Um, that, that, was, that, was a that was a tough day, um, and still, again, that hangs with us. But without it, we wouldn't be here today, and the, wouldn't, the business wouldn't have gone on to, you know, for, for a further six or seven years. After another three or four years, a book opportunity comes along. Um, that is another whole story, and I'm not going to go into that now, but if anyone wants to talk about or find out a little a bit about writing a, a book, I would very happily do a workshop on it. It's um, probably the most frightening thing I've ever done in my life, um, and um, it's, it's not all what it's cut out to be, and you don't necessarily get the, the rewards that you think, particularly when you see the, the plethora of um, cookbooks and things that are out there. Ours wasn't a cookbook per se, um, it was a guide to shopping. Um, but. Say again? No pictures. There were no pictures either, um, which um, confused a lot of people. Um, <laughs> so we've regrouped. Um, where we are now, we're trying to find strategic partners for the business. Um, we have a very strong relationship with Selfridges. We work with them quite closely. Um, we have recently 
started working with what at one point we might have ter termed the bad boys. Um, we're working with Ocado, um, the online delivery service. Um, and these are all things of helping us grow the brand, continue our original message about making great tasting food with well-sourced ingredients um, made simply. Um, and now if you go onto Ocado, you'll find, I think, 11 products of ours. Um, and over the years, or over the next six months, hopefully more products will arrive. And it's a way of getting our message out there and our story out there a little bit further. Um, we're getting close to the end now. Um, here's my five do's. Um, doing the do lectures, it allows you to reflect and to stand back a little bit from your business. And um, when you're in it every day, you don't often get to do that. But um, the week or so before we arrived here, and um, certainly the last few days, we've, we've had a, a fair amount of reflection. Um, and some of these are things that have been mentioned by other people in, in the room. Um, they're, they're not particularly unique, but um, hopefully they will reinforce. My first one is be brave. In fact, be braver. Be braver than you've ever imagined you need to be before. Um, pitch there and then think again and pitch another step higher and take those risks. Um, I think when we opened our first shop, we could have been a lot braver. Um, we could have gone to a high street. And you know what? If it had failed, it had failed. But there's nothing wrong with aiming high to begin with. Um, a second one, and everyone knows this, so we wrote the plan, write the plan, um, but then stick to the plan. The plan can evolve as you go along the way, um, and should evolve, but don't keep going off doing different things. Um, money, it's a dirty word for some, but actually our business wouldn't exist without money from either our customers or from the people who've invested in it, including ourselves. Um, money, money comes knocking on your door, and you're a business, then sometimes you should consider it. Um, it did come knocking on our door in the early days, actually, and um, we were too proud or too stupid to sit down and talk to people about it. We wanted to hang on to what was ours. And actually, if we had talked to them, um, the business may not have gone through some of the trials and tribulations that it did go, go through, and it may be a little bit further than where it actually is now. So have those conversations with money. You don't have to take it, but have the conversation. Um, my fourth one is another plan. And it's about your plan, not the business plan, but your plan. You need a plan as well. Um, I think you can get so wrapped up in running your business, but actually you do need to know where you're heading. And you need to check that you're doing what you wanted to do and you're still doing what you want to, wanted to do 12 years later. And if you're not, it's time to take a rain check. And finally, something which we have contemplated along the way, and that is to say that if it's not working, stop. Just stop. It's fine. No one's going to die or walk away. You might upset a few people in the process. Your pride might be hurt. The people around you, your pride might be hurt. But just stop and walk away. You can always start again. Nick. OK, we're wrapping this up with a photograph of us do, which is quite strange. Don't normally do this. Um, <coughs> don't normally do speeches, actually. But you won't find this photograph on our website. It's not really our style. But I wanted to shoehorn this little bit in on the end of this speech, actually, because um, this weekend, because meeting a lot of you, some of you I've met, some of you spoken to, some of I haven't, um, I wanted to talk about the partnership that we have and how important that is. Um, and we also know, speaking to a few of you out there, how lonely running a business can be on your own. You know, you, it's a lot of responsibility. I think you become very isolated, no matter if it's a small business or it's a huge business. I think running your business can be very lonely. And the partnership that we have really works, and we really advocate that. And OK, you've got honesty and sort of reliability. Those are, those are kind of given, really. But um, a partnership works for us because we both have the same end goal. And if you've got that same end goal, all the other kind of information on the way to that same main goal is just kind of nonsense, and you can deal with that stuff. But as long as you have that focus, as long as you've got that focus, then partnerships work. And um, yeah, we, we, we really advocate that. And um, I just want to end it on a, on a, on a positive note. Um, one of us is a pessimist, one of us is an optimist. You can choose who that is. <laughs> and we feel that you know, opposites do attract, and we feel that between those two of us, you know, we make um, 
good and uh, reliable decisions. Thank you. Thank you.